am quickly approaching doing, uh, having done a year of daily summation videos. Uh, it's coming up real soon here. It'll be like September maybe. Seems like a long way off, but it's not that long. It's already been over 250 videos that I've done to this point. Uh, and one of the things that happens when you do these videos is you start uh, writing a note in you to yourself of something that you want to do and you write something that comes back to you sort of cryptic when you look at it later. Uh, that's something that sort of has happened today, but the truth is uh, I believe that I can answer from a couple different perspectives the thing that I talked about anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about this and, and it's really only one of the notes in all of this series of notes that I, short series of notes that I have for this that, that, that is that way. But today I'm going to talk about a subject of they'll usually take it on the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host, I'm Kurt, and today is Saturday the 5th of June of 2021. Welcome to everyone who's here on Rumble on YouTube on the podcast. Uh, thank you for coming along today, and we're going to talk about a subject, like I say, of they'll usually take it. That's what the subject is going to be. Now, looking at my notes, what I said was difference in COVID-19 rules and regulations by federal, state, and local government. Now, there's actually two aspects, at least, of that that I want to talk about, even though I can't remember which I was particularly thinking about at the time I wrote the note. Uh, going on with my notes, though, I can't begin to tell you how many times I've said it. Government uh, entities at higher levels should not have broad sweeping powers. That ought to give you some idea of what I was saying there, by the way. Uh, that said, if you let them, they'll usually take it. As you can tell, that's where the subject of this video came from. By that, I mean to say <clears throat> they almost always take authority at just about every level if you're willing to accept them as authorities over a given thing. And then I finish up my notes with this sort of disclaimer. To be fair, some limited government folks are not this way. Now here's the thing. I wanted to talk... <laughs> I have D Dinesh D'Souza's problem, by the way. I have a series of stock phrases that I use a lot, and it's probably boring in some senses for me to do that. You're just going to have to live with it. The, the, content is to me what the more important thing is anyway. So if I happen to not be the best at stating it, I'll work to get better at that, but I'm going to continue to do my videos because I think I've got something to, th to say and I think it'll be worth it for you to hear it. So the difference in COVID-19 rules and regulations by, uh, by federal, state, and local governments. Here's the thing. Here's what it comes down to. There are two aspects to this. Number one is that I think it's more reasonable for local entities to make rules and regulations not at all being pushed on by people on a national level. I'm not saying they shouldn't look at national data and so forth, but honestly they should look at the local data and see, the, see where it stands in comparison to what you look at when you see the national data or anything else, even state data or whatever. <clears throat> so, But I think that if there are regulations of various kinds that occur, it should all be local. Now, this has mostly been adhered to in the United States, right? Mostly that's the way we work, so that's not so bad. But there was another aspect to this, and it's escaping me right at this moment. Um, <clears throat> but it has to do, oh, it has to do with the fact that if you look at the things people have said are needed at various levels, if you look at Texas or Florida, what you'll see is a total, you know, reduction of the rules with regard to COVID-19. They, they're, they're almost no specific COVID-19 related rules, and they're doing just fine. And by the way, both of them are quite populous, uh, though, to be fair, they're larger than, say, New York, which means that their populations are somewhat more spread out. Uh, maybe not so much between Florida and New York. I'd have to look to see how they compare size-wise. Maybe they're a lot closer. Texas is quite big, so maybe it's not as big, big a thing. But the point is that if you look at the rules and the regulations that have been talked about at various levels, vaccine passports, social distancing, mask wear, etc., you'll see that they are different from place to place. And interestingly, you will notice that if you look at certain places, they are uh, less. There are less problems, even though they're way more relaxed in the way, way they deal with COVID-19. Now, 
quoting Dan Bongino, and I know he got it from many other places, correlation not equal to causation. That means, that is to say, just because that happens to work that way doesn't mean the, them not doing that is the cause. On the other hand, it also doesn't seem to mean that it, that, that it doesn't have any effect either to do that. Either that or it has no effect at all, and they just happen to have been lucky and not had uh, COVID-19 spikes. <clears throat> In any case, and, th and this is where I'm coming down on things, this is the important thing. At any level, but particularly on a federal, on a national level, if you give government sweeping authority, broad authority on things, you're going to find as a rule they're going to take it. The government, saying, <clears throat> government saying, I'm not going to take authority over this thing that people have told me I should take authority over. That doesn't happen as a rule. Even if they don't have the right to take that authority, they generally will. Okay, that's just a reality. That's just a truth and a fact of life. I'm not saying this in order to say that shouldn't be true if it was how things were intended to be set up all the way up and down the line. The answer is it never was. If you look at what the founders said, now there were some who, who advocated fairly for a, for a strong national entity, governmental entity, but most people and the people who are most listened to, and in my mind, the people who had the better arguments, were arguing for an extremely limited national entity. And this is easy to see when you look at the National Constitution of the United States. <coughs> Put simply, uh, if you look at just Amendment 10, I think it is, of the Constitution, it talks about the idea that all powers not particularly delegated to the national government would be, uh, would be, uh, de would be uh, uh, for the states and the people of the various regions. In other words, the fe federal government, the national government, didn't somehow magically have the right to take authority over things that weren't specifically given to them by uh, the Constitution, and that was in, intentional. That was very much uh, the desire of the people who, who made that document. That was very much their desire, and it's very obviously the case. And so I guess what I'm saying is this. If your country allows for national government to have broad sweeping powers, gee, I'm sorry. There, the, the thing of it is, there's a reason that the United States did what it did. You want to know what the reason is? Let me tell you what the reason is. If you have a person who's in Podunk, Iowa, right, and that person is a, a farmer, telling that person he has to mask while he's outside when he spends, you know, uh, I don't know, let's say all but maybe a few hours outside or outside at his farm working, is a ridiculous thing. You, you, can't, you can't even make a statement like that. Now you can try to make the argument if you're a farmer or if you're away from people, well you can make a, a strong national law that says you don't have to do that. All of the masking and social, dis social distancing is sort of natural in that sort of instance. But my point is that there are lots of things that people do not and will not, cannot maybe even, think about when it comes to writing law. And the result is that, that that's, you know, you end up with people being burdened by laws that are not beneficial to them in any way. Here's the thing. We have a problem in the United States at this moment in time. We have a federal national government that wants to take control over any and everything. And this must stop. It has to be reined in. It must be dealt with. Okay. So this is basically what I wanted to get across today. You give them the power, most of them, what they'll do is they will take it. And that's not some, you know, uh, conjecture on my part. All you have to do is look at what happens when they get those powers. All right, I need to go ahead and wrap up. Uh, as I have said, this is the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I am your host. I'm Kurt. Today is Saturday, the 5th of June of 2021. Thank you for everyone who's here on Rumble, on the podcast, and on YouTube. Thank you for coming and joining me. Remember, Rumble is my 
preferred platform. I know that doesn't really necessarily mean anything to you. You're going to watch where you're going to watch, and I get that. Thank you for everyone coming aboard, regardless where it is. Um, you know, thank you for paying attention to what I say. I know that uh, you may disagree with me. If you do so, remember that on both YouTube and Rumble, at the very least, you can comment, leave a comment, and I'll try and look at the comments and see what you have to say so that we can at least have a discussion as to, you know, how things are. Remember that you can like or dislike my videos on YouTube. That's thumbs up or thumbs down, I think, in those cases. Remember that you can give me a positive or negative rumble on Rumble. I prefer positive in both cases. But, you know, the point is to learn what people are actually feeling, thinking about what it is that I'm saying. So you can give me a negative one if that's something that you feel like you need to do. Uh, thanks again for joining me today. I hope you're having a good day. For those who are Sabbath keepers, I hope you're having a good Sabbath today. Hope everything is going well for you, and hopefully we'll see you again on tomorrow's Daily Summation. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was recorded on Saturday, June 5th of 2021. Daily Summation is created for Kurt's religion and politics. Thanks for watching this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I hope you found it entertaining or instructional or maybe both. Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can go to blogs.kpshubert.com. That's blogs.kpshubert.com. I am on Twitter, Parlor, and Minds.com. My handle on each of those is at KP Schubert. That's at K-P-S-H-U-B-E-R-T. I have a Rumble and a YouTube channel. They are the Kurtz Religion and Politics channels on Rumble and YouTube. I have a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Kurtz Religion and Politics as well. I, have, I am on Patreon. If you want to support me, that's one of the better places you can do that. And you will find me at Kurtz Religion and Politics on Patreon. I have a podcast. The podcast is podcasts with, a, with an S dot kpshubert dot com. That's podcasts dot kpshubert dot com. I think you should be able to find me with relative ease on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. The best way I find to do that is to look for Kurt's Religion and Politics. You can try to use the da daily summation. I find that it doesn't work as well as a general rule, but you can always try that. I'm glad to have you aboard today, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.